awkwardly both on Instagram Live on my phone and um, Facebook Live and recording a podcast at the same time because our usual software isn't working. Um, things are intense, y'all. So the Ask Allison's for the foreseeable future are going to be COVID related. Um, they will continue to be multiple questions in each one, just so you know. And I'm getting my notes up for today. So it feels like every day is like a week. It feels like things are changing really fast. And um, we're here for answering your questions. We're going to continue to be here um, and serving you. So let's get into a few quick things. I do want to thank Therapy Notes. They sponsor the podcast. They're part of the reason I'm able to be here every day answering, answering all the questions y'all are sending. So give them some love. Uh, I've got some podcasts coming up. We're just going to pile in the podcast because there's a lot that, um, a lot of niche specific things or modality specific things that y'all want to know about telehealth. So we've got one coming out tomorrow about play therapy and telehealth. Um, we have some coming out about somatic work and telehealth. If you guys have other things that you want to know um, that are modality related. I'm hearing EMDR. If any of you guys do EMDR remotely, I would love to talk to you on the podcast so we can give some hows. So um, I also recorded a really great podcast with Amber Lida, who is the online therapy queen, but Zoom is not really processing any recordings today. So that was lost to the ether. Maybe we'll, maybe it'll process in 24 hours. We'll see. So here are today's questions. I'm going to get to it. I promise. Today's questions. How can I manage my anxiety while I'm home with my kids? How can I suggest to my group practice owner that we go hundred percent online without losing my job? And is it safer for my practice to be insurance based or private pay right now? Those are the questions we're going to answer. So we're going to start first with how can I manage my anxiety while home with my kids? So I'm an anxiously wired person. Um, if you listen to me, you know that. Um, my nervous system is having a heyday with all of this. I'm still navigating it, but here's what's working for me so far. I'm examining what I'm actually worried about and what I'm not. I'm really sensitive to other people's anxieties, um, including things people post online. I definitely internally react to things. Uh, so when I get some distance, which is it's absolutely required for me to get distance in order to hear my own thoughts. Um, I'm worried about my parents. I'm worried about my parents-in-law. I'm worried about small businesses that I frequent that have really high overhead um, and whether or not they're going to be able to reopen. I'm worried about the employees of those businesses and their families. I'm worried about private practice therapists feeling hopeless when honestly I think we are in maybe the best situations or one of the best situations um, with regards to this crisis from a vocational standpoint. Um, I'm worried about the kids who don't have meals, but I keep hearing really great examples of communities coming together to serve them. Um, so I'm trying to let that one go. Um, then I look at what I'm not actually worried about. Like, I'm not worried about getting it. I have a sore throat and a fever right now. Stay away from me. Um, I'm not worried about my immune system's response to it. I'm healthy enough. It's not going to be an issue if that is what this is. It could be just a weird day. Who knows? Um, I'm not worried about paying my employees. I'm not worried about anybody in my household getting it. We'll all be fine. Um, I'm a little nervous about toilet paper, um, but we'll just take more showers. So it's, it's getting really clear about what's my anxiety and what's not, because you're probably absorbing like I am other people's anxieties and other people's panic. And that's not helping anybody. Um, let me look. And then I look at like, how can I be in action around the things I'm actually worried about? So for me, I'm doing my best to get everything out to you guys so that you do have hope and you do know that there are a lot of resources out there and it is not as dire as it feels right this moment for us as a job um, and financially. So I'm trying to get as much info out as possible. I'm trying to, um, I'm, I'm donating to the causes in town that are doing some good for the people who no longer are getting paid. Um, I'm, and I, I think it's really important for those of us who have had stable, steady practices, who have had an easy, 
um, translation from in person to online, I really think the onus is on us to help our community. If you have steady income and you can work from home, I really, I, I will probably get on many soapboxes around this, but if you can, please do contribute to your community. Um, I got some gift certificates to some of my favorite small businesses. I tipped um, in, a, in a big way, in a way to help the workers who were there, um, those kinds of things. Over the phone, that's another benefit. I did this over the phone so that I didn't expose anybody to my weird sore throat situation. So um, I'm also texting other consultants that you guys know and love, and we are sharing information so that we can make sure that um, the information gets disseminated as quickly as possible. Because we have a lot of overlap with our, already, our audiences, but it's not, um, you know. Anyway, let's see. So um, I'm also noticing what's triggering my anxiety the most, and I'm staying away from it if possible. I'm limiting my social media time. Um, starting tomorrow. I'm limiting um, my news. I'm only going to look at the news right before I come on a live um, because I want to make sure I'm not saying something wrong or if there's some really great thing I want to be able to share it. Like I shared in a story and in the in, on my Instagram and in some Facebook groups about how um, Health and Human Services, U.S. Department for Health and Human Services is allowing us now to use Skype and FaceTime and other things. I want you guys to use that as a last resort, like still try to use another platform that's HIPAA compliant, but I want to get that info out because I know a lot of us are struggling with connectivity to some of these platforms that are just overloaded. Okay. Um, I'm also noticing what's calming my anxiety. And um, for me, that's keeping away from my phone and being really present, hanging out with my kids. Um, sometimes that's increasing my anxiety too. Um, teaching really badly, because apparently now I'm a homeschool mom. Um, being outside, exercising in ways I love. This is really unprecedented stuff that we're dealing with, you guys, and I want us to be gentle with ourselves. Um, we're not gonna do this perfectly. Um, there is no perfect with a pandemic. None of us have experienced this. And so shit's messy. It's just the way it's going to be. And um, I think when it comes to being the safety in the storm for our kids, we just do the best we can. And we have grace for ourselves when we're not. So I don't have a great answer. Those are just some things that are working. I want to move on to this next question. I live in a state that has been highly impacted by this, but is taking slow steps in social distancing. I work for a group practice and our clinical director is offering teletherapy to all clients, but it isn't requiring, but isn't requiring it. How can I suggest to my group practice owner that we go 100% online without losing my job? Their theory is that we're all okay as long as we don't have symptoms, which you and I know isn't true. I feel really torn. Um, you suggesting teletherapy exclusively may be met with defensiveness or it might be met with a sense of validation for a route that this person was already considering going in. Um, I've seen a lot of group practice owners be somewhat wishy-washy um, and I don't, I don't mean that to sound harsh. They're trying to make this call for a lot of people. They're trying to make this decision for their staff who, you know, they might be afraid that people won't transition to online, so they're worried about paying their staff, they're worried about paying themselves and their bills, they're worried about their clients and the practice. They've got a lot of pressure. Um, and so I want us to have some empathy for the group practice owners who are truly doing the best they can too. And um, I think it's important for you to speak up and say what you need to say and do what you think is right. Um, it would be a clinical nightmare to fire somebody right now. Um, I'd be really surprised if anybody got fired for speaking their mind. I think if, if you did, God, you never needed that job anyway. <laughs> um, I think it would be really ethically immoral to um, basically back out care that you were providing to clients. So if they threaten that in any way, I would just calmly remind them that you're caring for people who need consistency right now. Um, and you just wanted to share your opinion. And my guess is that as this progresses, and maybe even between the time this person sent me the question and today, um, the owner will see the wisdom of telehealth and either forget they threatened or apologize. Um, if they did say, I'm going to fire you for that. Um, or don't tell me how to run my business or whatever. 
Um, I do have concerns about you working for somebody that you think might fire you for advocating for what you believe is right. Um, but now is not the time maybe to be in action around that. We can discuss that later. So is it safer for my practice to be insurance based or private pay right now? Um, this is a big question I've been thinking about a lot for uh, a week, like as I watched this tidal wave come. And my initial thought, my knee jerk reaction was, of course, it's going to be better for insurance based practices just because it's cheaper. Um, and I kind of braced myself in my group private practice that's private pay um, as we shifted online. And I expected at least some fallout, but every single person is continuing online. Um, and here's, here's the logic behind why I believe they're actually going to be even. And there's not, um, it's not a negative to be private pay right now. Uh, the people who are really needing to use their insurance may feel a bigger hit with that $30 copay than the people who are paying $200 for a session. Uh, not everybody can work from home, and it seems that those that can are often in the more economically privileged group of people. Uh, who for whom like $200 is a smaller percentage of their income. I'm just grabbing that number out of the air, but $200 is a smaller percentage of their income than the $30 for the person who might, um, might not have a job right now. Um, so I think that the folks who are working from home and private pay, well, private pay people probably are more likely to have an emergency fund. Um, so that six months of expenses saved in an emergency fund and sometimes savings on top of that. Um, yeah, so that's something to consider. Um, people need therapy right now more than ever. Uh, everyone is overwhelmed. New clients are going to keep coming in. I had two new clients call today, um, and I converted them both. People may catch their breath for a minute first, and that's okay. We're really, really lucky that we're an industry that I don't think will be impacted long term. Um, it's not like we're a restaurant that just opened with rent and equipment that costs over $10,000 a month and employees that we have to lay off. We're in healthcare, and it's luckily not the kind of healthcare that involves having to be around people um, necessarily. Like we're not on the physical front lines. We are on the front lines of this emotional wreckage that is vast. And a lot of us have anxiety and a lot of us have grief and it's, it's messy and we're the best people to help with that. Um, something I'll speak more on in a future episode is that we are um, unable to control who calls us and what we do, but what we can control is how easy it is for people to find us. So making sure that your marketing is on point, making sure you're following best practices for getting your name out there. Obviously, we're probably not going to coffee with strangers right now to network, but there are so many ways that we can make ourselves known online and make an impact and be of service to people. So we'll probably get into that deeper and deeper as we go, but I'll be back with more tomorrow. Um, Please DM me your questions on Instagram if you want to talk about how COVID is impacting your practice and you have a specific question, please do. Um, I'm on Instagram, abundance underscore practice underscore building. It was a bad choice. Um, so shoot me questions via email too at hello at abundancepracticebuilding.com if you have questions for this. We're here, y'all. We're here. Um, I will talk to you all very soon.